What episode is this, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> this is episode number 82 mm. of Slappercast, a weekly talk show with laggards. I'm here with Eric C. Hughes. Hello. Patrick James Devlin. PJ for <laughs> short. <laughs> and myself. I don't think any of us are awake yet. Chad Smalley, what? I don't think any of us are quite awake yet. No. Especially you, Chad. No. <laughs> One and a half hours of sleep. Yeah, this 6 a.m. stuff, you know, this is just just to show our love for, for the, the birds. Well, it is for the birds, but well, we, they get up early for we the want worms. to show these slappers how, how much we care. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So how you guys doing? What's what's uh what's cracking? Well, we Besides just uh, dawn. What is we just we just dodged another hurricane. Yeah. Laura didn't want to bore. So we sent it sent her over to Lake east. Charles. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, poor Lake Charles, man. Oof. Doesn't look good. Yeah, that, but, was, that was rough. Yeah. Did not look good. Space City Weather said that uh if that storm surge had hit Houston, we we would have had a serious problem. Like Houston, we have a problem, or like Houston, we we'd have a serious problem. Oh. Like if that storm should have hit Lake Charles, would have hit us, it would have been devastating. Like I think they even thought worse than Ike. Ike. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And Ike was pretty bad. The storm surge was bad. With yeah. Ike? yeah. For Ike was yeah. How far north did it reach? Far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they showed a they showed a satellite view of like the, the like the some some of the lakes and inlets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of them were like were underwater. Yeah. So that's like Yeah. It's a lot of fucking water. Yeah. We were we've talked about this before. That was the drummerless tour that we were on uh when Ike hit. We mm. were we weren't here. Um it was a doozy. I was up yeah. in I was living up in Lindale Park at that time. Just north of where I live now. Mm. Oh. And it was uh it was very windy. Yeah. yeah. We we got it the next day. We got the winds the next day while we we were actually watching stop signs bend and traffic lights rattle off and yeah. Just, I mean we it, it was, in Evansville, Indiana. Yeah. Right. It literally yeah. caught up to us the yeah. next day. Crazy. Yeah. Just looking for you. Yeah. Storm with a with a with a with a with a score to settle. So yeah, dodging dodging hurricanes and um we're supposed to be in the studio and that's been postponed because of the storm. I roll. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so we're going in to, to do some more work today and tomorrow as well. So uh, looking forward to that. And then uh, we've also got the Sherwood thing coming up. And that's going to be fun. Uh, so we're, we're, we're changing some stuff up. The, there's going to be, a, you know, a... Uh, Performance. We're going to be some other people performing from, from what I understand, and we're we're going over logistics right now, so that's going to be fun. And uh, oh, so so last week, so we didn't we we didn't really get a chance to get into all the fun O'Bannon stories because we know with Chris on, we had so much to talk about mm-hmm. just yeah, with was, the current, yeah, you know, bucket of crap that we're you know has been dumped on us. Um, just just a little update from from that. And that one too. So they're trying to get Blackwater, the brewery, open right now, and TABC are changing the rules. So if you're not familiar, TABC is the Texas Alcohol um, Beverage uh, Commission. Beverage, yeah. They're changing the rules on on these people as they're trying to open up their 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 clubs and their their businesses. So Blackwater has been trying to open up, and they paid their money, and they're you know, and as of the day that they. Received the money for the for the permit. They changed the change rules, it again, and they yeah. have to wait again. So, mm-hmm. uh, so you know, it's just just another one of the uh, another one of the just heart heartbreak breaking stories that you that you hear with this crap. But uh, that's that agency has no business, no business being in business. I mean, they're just <laughs> they're 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 awful. So that's Chris's. You know, that's one of the things he's having to fight right now. And and and. Uh, but but it was great to have him on, and I thought it was uh, I, I thought it was just I- I- incredibly enlightening having him tell us how you know how much crap that they have to go through just on a you know just on a daily basis to 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 run a company you know you you, you really have to you have to have a thick skin and a and a you know will to fight so yeah. uh, mm-hmm. so so that was really fun and uh, we got a couple of 
couple of really fun guests lined up for, for down the road. Anything we can announce yet? Yeah, well, I talked to a local comedian, uh, Slade Ham, who uh, we've spoken about on this show a few times. Um, but uh, n- not just a comedian, uh, author, and he's, uh, he's also a uh, photographer, and just incredible. I'm going to uh, post a link to his. Phone's ringing. Oh, God damn it. Caller, you're on the air. <laughs> we, we didn't think you were going to get it. What? Bring them on. Put them on. <laughs> what? Airplane mode, right? Yeah. 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 Fucking shit. <laughs> it was bound to happen sooner or later. Well, I just forgot. So. It's all right. Mom and Dad, uh, I sent them a link to uh, one of our podcasts, which they watched and they enjoyed. So really? uh, we'll uh, give a shout out to Irving and Ellen Hughes up in northern Vermont right now for the summer. They normally live down in Kyle, Texas, just south of Austin. But they were just calling a second ago, so we'll uh, we'll make sure I I'll make sure I call them back. They probably <laughs> should check in to see how we're doing from that hurricane that we yeah. barely survived through. Yeah, yeah. Close call. Mm. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt Slade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll post a link to his his YouTube channel. It's um uh and and also they do a podcast as well called the uh, Whiskey Brothers. Mm. And he and some other comedians, uh, Sam Damaris and some other, uh, really really good stuff. But um, so Slade has said yes, he'll be he'll be he'll be on. And like us, his, a lot of his uh, shows have been canceled. Um, yeah, yeah. So so they're, you know, the our our, our stand up friends are are sitting down. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, comedians are basically in the same boat that musicians are. Yeah. As I think we've talked about before in the show. There was a, a, I don't know if y'all seen the articles from this, that there was a guy who posted a, an article in, on LinkedIn. It's a blogger, entrepreneur guy. He's actually a co-owner of a comedy club in, in New York City. Um, where he's, he's basically sounding the alarms that, you know, New York is screwed. That's never going to come back to what it was before and yada, yada. And, uh, Jerry Seinfeld was really offended by this article and published an, an op-ed in the New York Times saying, yes, yeah, we are. <laughs> you're, you're wrong. Yeah, shut up. What does, Jerry know, what does Jerry know about any of that stuff? <laughs> well, that's, that's what the guy, and the guy, guy's reply was taking him to task saying, don't you have, don't you like live in the Hamptons anyway? I mean, you're not actually here seeing what's happening. Right. You know, it really is bad. Um, but I, I, I think both of them actually had good points. So Jerry, Jerry's, Jerry's argument with it was that, you know, yeah, it's going to be challenging. I mean, New York will survive, just like all cities will survive, because because people. He's talking specifically talking about the comedy business, I think, in in particular from um, from that standpoint about you know everybody everybody's doing things remotely, and, you know, the live streaming thing now, and um, but that's not going to be the only thing that we do. People are still going to want to go to clubs and see live music and see live comedy because we need people have this desire to be with other people that. And that's the power of New York. And so one of the reasons why New York has been so powerful culturally is because everybody's so close together and around each other all the time. And, you know, just because that desire is not going to go away, eventually we will get back there. But that doesn't really address the immediate concerns. Yeah, which is paying rent on <laughs> yeah. clubs that aren't open. And yeah. it's, I, take, I take a lot of umbrage when I hear anybody that has any sort of influence especially financial influence when they start putting their two cents in, you know what I mean? It's like they can put their two cents in, but they can't preach to you like, you know, well, it's going to be okay. What's your problem? Yeah. It's going to be okay for you motherfucker. Because like Chad just said, Jerry's got some money in the bank. Really? He's fine. (laughs) He'll be fine. Yeah. It's the people that own the actual businesses are the ones that are obviously having that don't have that. $50 Fifty million dollar cushion, or whatever, whatever Jerry's bank account statement says, or whatever it is. And but the the guy James L. Tucher is the guy who wrote the original article that Jerry was responding to, and um, one of the main things he he harps on in, in the article is how uh, what the, the sort of big question mark right now, the big unknown, is like what's going to happen with all this office space in cities like this is true for everywhere, but in cities like New York where you've got just miles and miles of real estate that's just one hundred percent office space from you know. From our, starting from whatever floor that is up to the top and sure. all of these buildings. Uh, where, where a lot of these companies are discovering now, like, hey, we can actually do pretty well just working from home. You know, we don't have to pay rent on 
office space anymore and don't have to commute. So maybe we won't, we won't go back to that. Maybe we're not going to renew our lease True. at the office. You know, that's, there's a lot of that going on right now. And that was going to happen anyway. I, I posted, when I posted about this the other day, I said, we, we were on this trajectory anyway, that the, the, the pandemic has hastened it like overnight, yeah. you know, yeah. decisions that companies probably wouldn't have made for, for, for years to come have been made for them <laughs> in a sense. And, uh, so just, it's just an interesting thing that there's, there's so much, the, the ecosystem that, 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 um, that develops around real estate like that, that we've just kind of taken for granted. Uh, that's all dissolving right now. It's disintegrating before our eyes. And that's, that's what this guy was freaking out about in this article. It's like, this is, yeah, this is bad. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not, we're, we don't have any way to bounce back from this anytime soon. Um, but that's what's happening. I was walking through uh, Rice Village yesterday and, and, hadn't really, I walk through it all the time on, on my walks around my neighborhood, but I hadn't really taken note of how many shop fronts are. There's some vacant. Shut, there. Yeah, there's yeah, we a were, lot. We were down there last week and yeah. we were driving around just to get out of the house and we noticed too that there yeah, was a lot it's, of. It's, that's the red light district for all you yeah. people that don't <laughs> know, where, I, I don't know where it is, but. Right, just, right, yeah, for, for non houstonians Rice Village is one of the last uh, sort of old school open, like shopping areas, shopping districts, a lot of old buildings that have been there. Some newer buildings, but a lot of older buildings have been there since, I don't know, 60s or 50s or something like that. And it's, you know, something that was already endangered, obviously, because of the digital economy and people are shopping on Amazon now. A lot of these old little shops, mom and pop shops are, are suffering. So, but that's uh, <laughs> one of the last neighborhoods that has that now. And it's kind of scary to see that because I know that the, the whoever, I think Rice University owns a lot of that, that real oh, estate really? now. Yeah. But whoever owns it is just dying to put up more high rises because there's already a lot of that in that neighborhood already. Yeah. And that's, unfortunately, I think that's very likely. Human, that's human compartment storage. Anyway. <laughs> what? Yep. That's a, that's a David Beebeism. Human compartment storage. That's a very good. <laughs> the, those high rises. There's yeah. one going on right over here on Studemont, right, right on the yeah. other side of 45. And there's another one going on somewhere. I was just like, God, it's going to make this whole area just more congested. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This yeah. Like a two lane well, we road. can see it now. You can t- I, I, <laughs> Oh, Lucky's Pub. Lucky, Lucky's Pub on the corner yeah. of uh, Houston and and, uh, and White Oak is uh, now going to be another condominium. It's a, such a shame. That was such a great piece of land. I mean, it's, it's still a great piece of land, but it was just such a nice building and just old and kind of looked like a mini Fitzgerald's. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, sitting I, right there in the, yeah. I played there once with Jesse Dayton, and I've gone there to watch Astros games with Allen Hill and... Of course, it does flood out every single time the, the yeah. bayou rises. So yeah. hopefully, the, and, and, and anytime an eighteen wheeler goes through a puddle there, yeah, exactly. they're, they're <laughs> underwater. <laughs> it's a, it's a, but it was a nice, it was a nice try. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So that's that's basically, you know, the, you know, obviously we can harp on for days, but also to to lighten it up a little bit, I know we have some questions from our, our friend Kelly that we'd uh, we've been um, saving for for <laughs> for today. Uh, She's been she's been very good about going through all the episodes and and uh, mm-hmm. yeah she's working her way back through I think she's all the way back to episode thirty or earlier or something this bang of the all the episodes before episode fifty were audio yeah. only yeah Kelly's on death row for those who yeah. don't <laughs> don't know she's <laughs> I've got nothing but time <laughs> she trades she trades cigarettes for internet time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And toilet wine. That's the currency right there. Yeah. Toilet wine. Yeah. yeah so, she, so I compiled all the questions of her as I could find. And a lot of them are just, you know, sort of rhetorically silly questions that she was asking just to be fun. But I thought they were deep. But we maybe we should go down this and see if there's anything. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I think, was the, the most serious, you know, actual interesting question was, do, do we have any strange pre-show rituals? I like to, I like to warm up vocally and uh, and you know warm up my fingers you know an hour at least an hour before so that and because we do our own gear a lot of people have you know rituals uh i know um well i won't mention the name because then we'll have to go into you know beetle territory so uh <laughs> but i know one of the guys you know likes to run you know likes to to to, to do it you know a couple mile run or if there's you know in south america and they can't leave the hotel they, do, do laps of the of the stadiums and stairs and stuff of that. Mm-hmm. So so they're warm. I love that. I love to 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 run during the day, uh, 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 especially on the day of a show. Mm-hmm. So 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 because we load our own gear, we do a little bit of cardio beforehand and a little bit of 
wait a little bit of we always have to to get that part of your engineer head working when you get in you find that your your stage is about the size of a teacup <laughs> you know balanced on top of a toothpick and a um so, so in a perfect world if, if if we're going to play a you know a, a a club and there's there's sound and lights and the sound and stuff like that my routine would in a perfect world would be a hey, run in the morning but it m- most importantly vocal and uh and, a, and hand warm-ups before the the you know before the what you call it before the show so th- there's a there's a i haven't done this in a while but there's a it's a really good. It's, it's it's good for all of us. I mean, it's it. But I saw a guy do do this uh, finger exercise. This one where you would it, it making it, me dizzy. Yeah, it, <laughs> it it makes your you. Of course, you don't have to do it fast. You, but it's just it's such a great stretch for your for your fingers, and it also gets you. It gets your it, it, it limbers up your mind too. <laughs> it's because it's you have to focus on it. But that that was a you know so so there's a lot of stuff like that where you want to just you want to be loose and you want to um, you want to you know especially when we're in in towns that we don't usually play or we're in in you know if if it's a festival or it's, you you know just maybe look up a little bit about the town a little bit about the you know just 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 have something in your in your in your mind that's that's new that you've just figured out and you know and you know if. Nine times out of ten, the, pe- there's, the people that live there have some kind of pride for, you know, where they're where they live, and so so they want to hear they want to hear you talk about it and, yeah. and your take on it. So yeah, really little things true. like that. Yeah, it was hard for me to think of anything that was that we do that's strange, you know. Everything you that, do is strange. But like, I mean, you're saying that the warm ups. I mean, you would kind of expect, yeah, you know, um, like we don't do. I mean, you like, well, for example, you talk about the running thing. The drummer in the Pixies, David Levering, uh, Levering uh, he does that. He'll, he'll jog around any space he can find before the show. He'll mm-hmm. just run around in circles, that type of thing. But there's, there, I, I can't think of anything that, that quite that eccentric that, we, that any of us that have, do in the band, you know what I mean? You, know, you do your vocal trills and stuff like that as you're, as you're, as you're driving. You know, like you're talking yeah. about your vocal warm-ups and things like that. Um, and like you say, in running, sometimes we'll get a, a text, you know, Give me an extra fifteen minutes because they're going to go yeah, around. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we do. We for for many many years. Whenever we have uh, a coffee shop near the club that we know is there, is we'll make extra time. Yeah, you know, maybe an hour, anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour before we need to be at the club, we'll meet there first. Good point. And well, that's yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. It's usually how we have have our in the past. That's how we had, we'd have our meetings and stuff like that. Or sometimes we wouldn't really have anything to talk about. We just sit there and just chat about anything. Yeah, or we do a set list. Yeah. Do you have any, any weird? Well, you, you guys left out the you know the prayer, the pre-show <laughs> prayer where we stand <laughs> in a circle and hold hands and well, that's what we give praise to Satan. Yeah, I mean that's. What we do. <laughs> I used to do finger stretches, which are which are which are um, I used to do with my students and yeah. at the schools to get them going, and and it's it's kind of fun to do this because it, it really kind of stretches out a thing uh, a little bit. A lot of drummers will they'll sit on a practice pad and they'll play or whatever. But I'm just pfft, wasted. To me, that's just wasted notes. You know, it's just kind of one of those things where it's like you're just wasting energy. Mm. Um, but uh, a guy that I've been um, following for a while, Dave Elich, he does um, like jump rope before. It's kind of the equivalent of running. Yeah. Kind of because because he's like he's like before you start, you want to have your whole body warmed up, and just playing on a pad is only going to get your hands moving. But you, you want your whole body sort of kind of. You want to have a light sheen of, of sweat already before you start playing, and that way your your whole body is warmed up. So, when we start playing again, and maybe even next week, I might bring my jump rope and do some jump rope out in the field. Yeah, um, yeah, just to kind of get. I mean, it's gonna be hot enough anyway, but but just just the idea. Plus, you know, getting older, you know, you kind of want to have some kind of maybe a little bit of a warm up to kind of just get your blood flowing. Yeah, and, you know, so, so sit in the van for a couple hours. You want to get out and do something. So. I think I think as far as what I have to do behind the drums, I think just stretching and, and getting that little warm up thing would be mm. plenty enough to 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 get me ready for the gig. Well, I feel too if 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 you're not if you if, if there's not a physical you know time before before you perform, the 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 mind is slowed down and the the just you're just not as sharp. You're not as you're not as together on the 
you know, you, you, you have to be, you have to have that, 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 that headspace going to where you're, you're ready to, you know, cause a lot of the time, a lot of our stuff is we're not that call and response band, you know, that are that we get with those big, you know, sing along parts or whatever, but it's, it, it's still shocking to me how many people know all the, the words and the parts of the songs and even the, the, the new stuff that's added, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the lyric changes that happen on a, a night to night basis. I'll be able to kind of clue into that and are able to, to, so, so what I'm saying is if you're not warmed up and you're not ready for it and you're it's like, you know, you're slow, they, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll mow you over. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing to, uh, and, and I, I'm really sorry, back to, uh, back to talking, um, about having Slade on the show, I'm really looking forward to putting side by side the musician and the comedian's, you know, rituals and yeah. habits and, you know, pre-show and, yeah. and post -show. Even the uh, creative process, yeah, too, creative, which yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and again, not to push, the, no, well, of course, I, you know, I, I, you'll be excited when you talk to the guy because he's, He's he's a wealth of knowledge, and he's toured he's toured Afghanistan and uh, Iraq, um, you know, with the with the troops. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's gone over and entertained the troops and uh, and taken some incredible photos. I I I, I, I want to wait to to bring him on to do all this, but but the comedians, in in my opinion, comedians have the hardest job. In that there's one mm -hmm. and they it's them against you know and if you're not you boy you talk about going out there slow or going out there cold and you're done you yeah you're gonna get killed you're gonna get killed I, I i finished a book recently called digging up mother by doug stanhope and not only is the book i i couldn't put it down just brilliant cover to cover non-stop and jaw-dropping my, my my kids would come in you you okay <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, just, yeah, I just read it, a little piece, and um, but they're, they're, what that one person against the whole room, and you, man, you talk about living or dying by the by, you know, by and and you know, we have to prepare. I mean, we have to, you know, right now we're writing the best stuff that we can. We're not mailing anything in, and. But it, but I know that what it's like to, to, to mail it in. I've done those shows mm -hmm. where you just come home and you're like, ah, never again, never again, mm -hmm. because you you want to make sure that you're at to just, you know, performing at your peak. Right. And 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 the, these these people don't get a chance to, uh, they they don't, they don't get a chance to make that second impression if it's their, you know, first time in that room. So. We, and we have it easy because we have. You know, there's, there's safety in numbers. Yeah, right. not even not even strength, but safety in numbers. Yeah, you know? but but also you know we can we turn you know turn around to you and you know kind of you know <laughs> you know it's okay here we go you know we got this or you know I mean I, Chad and I have been through shit we made it through Yonkers New York <laughs> we <laughs> yes. can make it through anything <laughs> fucking hell you can make it there you can make it anywhere yeah. it's up to hey. you Yonkers no okay. <laughs> I don't know if you're probably not familiar with that story. We've told on the show before, but very, very briefly, we played a show in Yonker, Yonker, Yonkers, uh, at a club I can't even remember, the Irish pub I can't remember the name of. But Willie the, Mac sucks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the audience basically just pretended we weren't there the entire time. No applause. But dance to every single song and requested stuff. Well, yeah, that's, that's, like that's the Northeast, though. I mean, that's, that's, what they, that's, what they, that's what they said. I said, well, you could have told me that. Yeah. That's literally no, the we, only we, time that's happened, though. If we, yeah, I used to play up in Boston all the time and, and getting and in New Hampshire, of course, and just getting applause was, was rare. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just they dance, yeah. but they don't. It's like, it's like they're all Norwegian or something like that. It's the same thing in Norway. Like when we played in Norway, they just look at you and you finish the show and they're like, God damn, that was the best show I ever saw in my life. You know, kind of a thing. Yeah. It's like, well, why? Like really you said, why, you? Yeah. why didn't you tell me? Why didn't yeah. you give me give me a sign? God damn it. Yeah. yeah. You know. But well, I I I, I, I don't need. We've we've proven it in this in this time that we're in. I I I don't need applause. But but it's it was the it was the the the, you know there is the give and take and yeah. the give to them was the dancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know if they stand there with their hands in their pockets and back to you, 
you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't the case. This was the, and, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, that's I'm not, weird. Yeah. Just, just very, very strange. Yeah. yeah. When you're not getting enough feedback, it's, it becomes exhausting. We well, talked that, about it, it was exhausting. That's exactly what it was and is when you're, when you're working in, and, and again, a, a, a wedding, which I believe is another question, um, a, a wedding mm-hmm. when the, and, you know, when, when we're booked to do a wedding, the first question I ask is, are you sure that you know who you're talking to? Because we do not fly you to the moon, nor do we, you know, build or tear down a brick house. Or do we, you know, you know, we're not getting down tonight. So are you sure that you're, are you sure that you know who you're getting? Because we are not going to be, not that we couldn't learn it. And we, we might do a version of one of the two of these songs. That you like, but are you sure, you know, because your, your in-laws, your soon to be in-laws may not like us as much as you like. Not, not that we're going to be a punk rock show or. Spit and blood. Yeah, or gonna, you're going to do, do your show. We're just going to do a show, right? And but but in a in a in a different in a different venue, you know, for, for, from a wedding, you know, everything's fine. But then you put us in a wedding thing, and there's these people who are sometimes are meeting their in laws or future in laws for the first time, mm-hmm. and they're in a room. The last thing they're going to do is start get up and start jumping around, and, you know, letting loose. They're going to be on the best behaviors. It's like a first date. You don't go and tell them, oh, by the way, I do like the taste of human flesh. <laughs> That's not a first date line, just FYI. You don't, so, so, so you kind of pull back a little bit. And so, but the band suffers then because the band, you don't know what you're, what, what's expected of you. You know, you've been hired to do a job and you want to do the best you can. So uh, on that, should we move to the next question? Yeah. Sure. Any of these next questions? She, she, she had asked. How many marriages are we responsible for as blackguards? Not how many we've, not, not how many weddings we played, but how many marriages oh, are we Lord. responsible for? So we, we've, we don't really know. I mean, we've, we've got we zero, know that we are. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and it's, it, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a lot because we've met, uh, we've met people all over, all over the country and in Ireland too. People have come to Ireland. I mean, this, the, the number is large. But the number is, if I was to guess, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'd just throw a dartboard at a, at a, a, a dartboard, throw a dart at a piece of paper with numbers all over it. Cause I, it's, it's, um, it's more than, it's more than 20 and less than a million. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's a, I can't tell you the amount of people just from, you know, when talking about Chris Steele in College Station, just the, the amount of people that I've met and, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's, a, the, there's at least two couples I know have, have told us that they met on Patty's Day at, at our shows specifically. Yeah. Um, but then there's also a couple, there's, there's at least one couple I know live in Houston whom, whom I know met. We, we, we already knew both of them before they met each other. And now they've been together for, for however long we've been together. <laughs> yeah. 15 years or something yeah. and since, ever since they met. Um, that's kind of a trip. But, and then that's at least just one example. And that's just locally. I mean, I know yeah. there's people like that around the country as well. But yeah, I, I don't know. We've never really sat down and tried to count them <laughs> no. before. But and, uh, and weddings that we've played too is, is, is deceiving as well because you would think it's only a handful, but it's actually a lot more than we've, because we, we didn't do the actual, I mean, on, on a lot of them, we didn't do the actual reception, but we played the, you know, the, some form of the, the ceremony, or some part of the ceremony if it was. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's. Yeah. And there's not a ton of, obviously we we don't have anywhere near as many weddings under our belt as a band like like the El Orbits or well the El Orbits you know, are that's pretty much okay. for that, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean when I when I joined in two thousand two thousand and four it seemed like we were doing at least almost one every two weeks if yeah. not for the next yeah. three years or so yeah. four years um, the the only thing that I, I mean I I have Alan. You know, it reminds me a lot. He's like, oh, yeah, we played their wedding, whether it was the oldies band or the, the Orbits. Yeah. We meet people. and Oh, yeah, we played their wedding. I'm like, I don't remember. We just played yeah. so many of them. No. The only one I do remember was there was a family uh, here in town, and we played all of their kids' weddings. They had three kids, uh, uh, two boys and a girl. And I don't think I played the, the oldest son's wedding, but I played the second son and, and the daughter's wedding. 
And somebody said, oh, yeah, they, they, the family said, oh, yeah, we hired you guys for every one of our kids' weddings. Wow. It's kind of wacky. Wow. So all those weddings, and I've, I'm always curious, what is the most popular song of all time in your in all your time of wedding? Well, we don't we don't do the normal wedding stuff. You know, we do. I mean, we do like the Frank Sinatra stuff and the, the you know the early part, like yeah. the Fly Me to the Moon stuff. We do yeah. that kind of stuff. But it seemed for a, a minute uh, when so we had the Houston L orbits and we had the Austin L orbits, and I was in the Austin L orbits. It was me and my buddy Chris Johnson on bass and Landis Armstrong on guitar, and of course Jim. And David, it's a five-piece band. David would mostly front the band, and he played a little bit of keyboard here and there. But it seemed like um, uh, "Sweet Caroline" was a big one, and um, that uh, David Allen Coe song. Um, you never even call me by my right. name. Really, you know <laughs> yeah. people went crazy for that. They would pack the dance floor. And there's like some kind of like sing along stuff that's been kind of created over the year, you know. Oh yes, yes, mid, yes, uh, yes. During yes, the chorus, like yes, the audience kind of exactly responds to stuff, you know. Let me, let me, let me. Yes, yeah, yeah, that yes, whole thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then like the weird shit, like I mean, this, I mean not the weird shit. I mean the stuff that we wouldn't normally play, but someone would say, "Can you play a Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison, mm -hmm. or can you play Margaritaville by?" Would they like uh, our version? Of brown eyed girl. They would love our version. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody um, likes our version. But then every once in a while, David would get a thorn in his side, and he would. We would do. Um, there's a group, a band called the Tailgaters, out of uh, I think they're out of Lake Charles, but I think that guy lives in Austin now, and they have a song called "Brown Eyed Girl," which is not the Van Morrison version. It's a really cool kind of Cajuny kind of song, oh, and kind, uh, we kind would kind of wagon wheel up top. We we, up top. <laughs> we we whipped that out just to the chagrin of. To, uh, of us, but yeah, I mean, as far as weddings go, between Oldies Band and L Orbits, and I mean, every other band I've ever been in, I, I can't tell you how many I played. Probably yeah. 150, maybe weddings. Wow, a, a bunch, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. they're all they're all unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they are. I mean, that that's the that's the thing about it, and we've we've done some fantastic. Uh, one that I can think of off the top of my head is a good friend of ours. Uh, a lawyer here. I don't want to mention his name. Brian McNamara. <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, he had his wedding uh, at the uh, Petroleum Club downtown here, and just absolutely gorgeous. It's a just, nice room. Yeah, beautiful room, yeah. but zero volume. I mean, zero volume. What we're doing right now, too loud. <laughs> Turn it down. Not to their. I mean, to you know, to to, to their credit, they had you know a bunch of Irish, a bunch of Irish New York, and a bunch of you know, family and from all over the country and from Ireland and whatnot. But I mean, just the nicest people. And Brian is just a spectacular family lawyer. If anybody ever needs any of that stuff, but just an, an even better person, just a, just yeah. a, he's, he's from Dublin and he's the most soft-spoken, uh, but knowledgeable one, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Beautiful family, and uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> that room. Uh, we of course now we now we have the joy of playing direct. Uh, back then it was amplifiers to the ceiling, <laughs> just just on enough. Do you know? Just mean just the the light turning. You know, seeing the light on there. Brother, that's that's too loud. <laughs> Turn it down. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, weddings are definitely definitely. Uh, we're actually playing another, uh, we're playing some weddings next year. And uh, my, my questions have been answered. A, do you know who the fuck we are? And B, <laughs> do you, you know, are, are you prepared for her to, to, you know, to leave you, you know, <laughs> at the altar? Yeah. yeah. Don't blame they, us when this thing goes south. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we do, div we, we give discounts on the divorce party, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I always think of Brian's show that it's me was memorable for for me just because we were up on the that top patrolling floor. club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever do, do a wedding gig there? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that must be a popular spot to get. Oh yeah, for weddings. I played. I, th I think I played. Uh, I think I played an oldies band Christmas party up there for some company that had it at the patrolling. And it was weird because you know oldies band is kind of. Can be high energy. Can be kind of yeah. loud sometimes, yeah. 
And I remember just being like stuck in a corner and just kind of doing our show. And it just seemed like the sound wasn't going any further than the potted plant <laughs> that was kind of in front of us, you yeah. know, just because, of, you know, it's, it's a carpeted room usually. And, and it wasn't like they were dancing. They were just there having a Christmas party. Yeah. It was, it was strange, but yeah, they, they paid us. So I yeah. kind of don't give a shit. Check clear. Now, loading's a pain in the ass, but yeah, you know, but yeah, isn't every loading sometimes? <laughs> Well, I, I just I, I, last last time we rehearsed, I heard both these guys say, uh, "I don't have it on tape, but you can take my word for it." But I heard both these guys. I miss loading in. I both do. of them said it. I do. I do. I really do. Yeah, we joke, we joke about it, but it's yeah. yeah. It's, but but it, it's that it's that necessary evil that actually becomes part of your 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 warm up. It becomes part of your and if you do it right, you know, what I mean, if, if if you're not under the gun, if you're not late, if you're not yeah, you know staircase you know icy mm, staircase in the back yeah, of a yeah, club yeah, but yeah. you know it's a, you know it, it 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 is actually it it's cathartic and it's that moment of you know I, and and again i i'm not a gear head i i don't i still for for as much as as much gear i took my little studio apart yesterday and just rewired it because i don't didn't like to see all the the spaghetti mm -hmm. you know because i'd added some stuff and so i took that my studio apart but uh and i when I put it back together, it was just, it was that death. I, I had to turn the stereo on and just kind of listen to it and put it, you just, just sit by it because it's, <laughs> although I'm not a gearhead, I, I, I enjoy the, the symmetry of, of, uh, you know, of, of the gear and the placement of the, you know, you know, stuff that I bring in and take out, you know, to, to go play with or record, you know, it, now it's easy. Everything is, just eye level and you know just accessible but it's the same thing it can be this very w rewarding uh, uh exercise to 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 load in and to to put everything in its place and have your space and you know run the, run the wires right and just make it yeah. make it to you know cuz you really you, you know you, you want to be able to to move freely and not you know rip a wire out or pull it and knock a speaker over or you know whatever you just you want to have that you you want to have that to, man. We should go play a gig. <laughs> I, I want out of here. Yeah, I think there's a couple of reasons why I think it's it's that I I actually miss it and I enjoy it is that number one that you start to you, gives you an, an outlet to kind of start burning off some of that nervous energy before you go on by being you know carrying stuff around and being being active and doing something. I hate that. It's one of the things I don't like about shows where we have to wait, like sometimes depending on what's going on, like if there's a game we're waiting to end or there's some other, mm. some other thing that pub has going on before we start and we have to sit there and wait. Playoff game. I hate waiting to play. If we're ready to play and we're not playing, I hate right. sitting there and God. So when setting up, it gives, it gives me something to do to, with my, with my energy even before the show too. But I think too, there's this, just the associative thing is like my brain knows now we're setting up pretty soon we'll be performing <laughs> and then my, my brain just associates it like there's a reward coming for, for this hard work, you know, but I don't really, to me, I don't, it's, I don't ever dread it. You know, I don't ever, God, we have to load in again. Oh God, now we have to load out. Jeez. You know, I, I, I don't mind it at all. I, I've known plenty of musicians who do and I don't understand it. But well, it's, it's, kind of, and it's kind of ritualistic too. Like you get, you get into a groove of like, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes like every time. Yeah, it becomes yeah. like very, very you know, much. I don't so, know yeah. how it is with you guys, but I know that like, okay, first this happens, and then this thing goes on this, and then the kick pedal comes in, and then here comes the snare drum, and then the other drum, yeah. and then the cymbals go in order. Yeah, you know, from biggest to smallest, mm -hmm. in the, in that order, and then you know the mics go up or whatever. So it's just, and it's like, yeah, we, I, you know, we we I I know that this band, and when I play with Alan, we're two of the fastest teardowns. Setups and teardowns. Yeah. It's just like we just do it, boom, like like super quick. And the key, and and you know, I didn't I didn't really know this when I was younger. The key is as soon as you're done, if you can, start tearing down. As soon as you get done playing, you know it's over. Just start putting that stuff away. Don't let don't wait on it because then that energy you have from that gig starts to wane, <laughs> and then it becomes a chore. And yeah. that's when those guys start to bitch because they probably go to the bar, have a couple of drinks, sign some titties or whatever, and the next thing you know. They're like, oh, it's been an hour after we get done playing, and now I have to pack up my shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's annoying as hell. Yeah. That's never really been an issue with us, I don't think. I mean, we we do 
Well, some Mike, for example, when Mike was in the van, he, he would start bringing, he would do that immediately after the last song. Duh. <laughs> and he'd start unscrewing mics just immediately. But that, that was just part of his routine too. But sometimes you can't, sometimes we have people just coming at us and they want to talk to us after the show yeah. and things like that. But none of us have ever been really big drinkers or, okay, now I'm going to go have, you know, five drinks at the bar or something or hang out or just hang out at the club, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, in this band, I mean, for we don't me, do that. You know, yeah. I mean, I like to drink, but, but I wait till after, pretty much after I'm done packed up, you know, packed up my stuff. If the van is packed or whatever, or I'll run and get a drink and then help pack in, pack everything out. Because right, right. I don't want to hang around any longer than we have. Right, right. But exactly. I like a drink after the game. Sure, you know? sure. Like you say, when you start to feel like it's going to be work and it's going to be, you, you, you're not looking forward to it. You know, that, that's, that's, that's just killed your whole night. It just, you know, even if it was a mediocre, you know, what you thought might've been a mediocre performance or whatever, you know, yeah, you just, t you're just running it, running it into the gutter now by making the end of it worse, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, and uh, yeah, talking to people at the end, we, we always want to talk to people and we want, we want to, you know, you, you gauge, you gauge your, your, you know, performance, but we were applauded many, many times. I remember in Austin, especially being yeah. <laughs> just the staff being just gobsmacked by how quickly we were out of there. And they, cause they would complain to us about other bands that wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, they're there. They, cause they can't lock the, right. they can't lock up the place before, before all the stuff's out. So they're stuck there. And man, if you want to, if you want to piss off your employers, you know, make your, make, make the wait staff, and the barbacks and all that stuff. I make them have to wait around for you to get your shit out of there. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. I remember that, that gal at uh, Time Out 3 down in Paralance. Yes. That we, 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 she's like, you guys are done already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah. yeah. So the, they, were, they were happy about that. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, that comes from years, years of experience too, but I mean, that, that's been true for so long. Well, I've I, 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 I worked in bars for, yeah. forever. That, yeah. that, and you see those wankers that are just, they're chasing whoever, you know, whatever, Bar flies left or whatever, just just the last minute stuff that has to be done in their minds, and you know, and then you have to sit and wait for the you know the, and to get that. Oh, and there's nothing worse too when it's crap gear mm -hmm. and they're loading it up like they're like it's the you know the the museum, you know, moving on to the next the amp cases yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, get out. Yeah, we we've known there's a band that we knew who played it, played in Austin who would take, it would take multiple trips. Yeah. Because they didn't have enough cars to, to carry all the gear. Yeah. First load, come back. God. <laughs> you what? Think, yeah. yeah. Literally, it would take th like two or three trips to get all the gear out of, out of the club. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I, I, I mean, I, would, I don't care. I, and and they, they didn't draw flies, but I, I don't care if they were packing the place with lying around the building. That still not doesn't warrant having that, having that stuff. Yeah. Um, and having to put up with that yeah. crap. So I mean, that, that's at the extreme end of it, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. Most but most bands will take forever, even if they don't, <laughs> just because they're not being I hate that respectful on stage etiquette. It's like there's another band coming up. Yeah, we'd like to keep as much of the crowd here as possible. Mm -hmm. Could you move any faster? Could you please get the and they're out of our there, way. <laughs> like just sitting there talking to each other. Uh, how yeah. great they were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it, like that, really. You can't overstate that enough. The fact that Patrick used to be a bartender before. I mean, mm -hmm. for for many many years before. Uh, he was in a band and that, that this band has always kind of had that, that savvy because of that, um, because we are, but even, even without, I mean, both Patrick and I have worked, I'm not sure we have, did you ever work in, in customer service, like waiter, behind the counter, things like that? I worked that? at stores and stuff like that. Yeah, right. 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 yeah, exactly. There you go. So we, we all, we've all been and related in direct customer service and stuff like that. So I, you know, I always tip, you know, that type of thing. I'm always cognizant and, and considerate of the people who are working at pubs. Sure. But a lot of, I, you see a lot of bands just aren't. Um, and those are the ones who like, you know, you know, try to take advantage of any, all the free drinks that they're offered or, you know, there was a story of, of a band. I'm not going to name any of these bands. I will. In Austin. Who I think they were never at, one of those bands that was never asked back to the, to, to <laughs> Fidel after they played there. They knew that they were, uh, promised a meal, you know, so they were complete dicks about, and they had like, like invited their friends, put their friends on the, on the bar tab and yeah. things like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's, yeah, that's a no, no. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, don't come on. 
And it's, it's a lot of it is just, it seems so, so just common sense to me, but you know, if, if you're, you're essentially the guest, you know, you're, you're like the house guest of, of, of these clubs when you're there and you want to behave yourself and clean up after yourself mm -hmm. when you're leaving and thank the staff. Thank the I mean, sound it's, man. It's, yeah. It's, it's We're basic about that stuff. Before, it's really, like, is, you know, you know, giving a shout out to the sound man and stuff yeah. like that. And, you can't, you can't do it enough. Saying hi to this bar staff. You yeah. Know, don't forget, so and so's behind the bar taking care of you. Take care of them. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Tip the staff. You know. That's a, that's a terrible. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's it, it, it's it, I mean it should go without saying and it and yet it's it's uh, the 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 bands that don't get it will never get it. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, oof. You just can't you can't be in a club and 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 miss that. You know, or, or 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 then you're just that person that that band that's just oh that you're the oh, the only one that exists. You're the only thing, you know, the only the only one doing this and hardest working. This thing. Anyway, but they they actually were brought back. Oh, they were. Yeah, and they were fired again. <laughs> so summarily fired. Yeah, but that again, that's the problem too. When you have a club and you have many, many, many you know, iterations of the of the 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 hierarchy you know and and who's running the place and it's you know because it just gets to the point if you're if you're going to do live music you know thursday friday saturday or tuesday friday saturday you know whatever your days are it's still a hell of a chore to be able to get entertainment at uh you you you, you know whatever level whatever level of band that you're hiring it's hard to keep that you know even if it's middle of the road and you know or garage band or open mics or whatever you're doing, it's still hard to, to fill that, you know, even if it's two or three times a week, mm -hmm. it's hard to keep, you know, cause clubs want these four hour shows and in a four hour show, unless you're, you know, you, you just have to have much, you know, many, many, many different uh, parts of your act. Because if you're going to go in there, you're going to be a, a, uh, you know, singer songwriter, well, you're going to have four hours of songs that you don't know. And those songs better be really fucking funny and really entertaining or you're out. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, and a lot of the times, the, you know, this one person on the guitar are going to do a lot of slow stuff. So expect a lot of, you know, crowd interaction, not with the band or with the person, you know, but, you know, with themselves. And that's, that's recipe for disaster. It's just, well, yeah. I think one thing that, you know, musicians have to realize no matter how artsy they want to be or, or, um, you know, whatever, if you're going to be playing in bars, you're essentially a beer salesman. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's your job is to keep people there yep. and keep people drinking. And that way the bar makes money and that way you make money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's when people don't realize that, Hey, this is part of the job. Part of the job is you're working with the club to create an atmosphere that people are going to want to stick around to. Yep. If you want to get up there and, you know, get all, you know, I can't. Indulgent. Right. Indulgent. Self-indulgent. And, 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 and whatever, you know, do that. I mean, save that stuff for like when it's the last song of the night and no one's there still. I right. got one more song. Yeah. And it's about how I feel about this kind of thing, you know, or whatever. And to put, keep, you know, keep the people there. That's the, that's the, that's the important part. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, those, those types of moments can be fun too. And if you're just a slow night, you know, and your last couple of songs and you're just screwing around or, yeah, you know, fun, some fun, fun stuff can happen there because then, but still, even then you're doing it for the people who are, who are still there, you know, right. or even if, even if it's just for the bartenders, you know, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, it, we, we've talked about it on the show too. We've seen it, really experienced bands that we've, we've, that we've known for years, like to do these really kind of trippy instrumental things and stuff in the middle of a set. And yeah. And it's like, and you can just see the, you just see the crowd just turn away and yeah, just lose, to lose, you lose them people in real time. Like, yeah. but how do you guys not see this? But some, them, some people just don't, they don't, a lot of, some musicians just don't give a shit about that. They want to do what they want to do. You know, just, I guess there's something to say yeah. about that as well. But. Yeah. So anyway, you have more questions? There's tons, but let's go. <laughs> a lot of these are really silly. She, she asked, uh, you should do it with, I guess this, this was episode 63 where I think you were talking about, uh, um, ELO electric light orchestra yes. where you li had listened to their entire catalog. Yeah, it's great. It's fun. But she said you should do a deep dive into Lark's NCL. Nope. Do you know who they are? I looked them up. Oh, <laughs> 
When I saw that question, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, what's, what is, what is this all about? I didn't know who they were either. So I'm not doing that, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be, probably would help if you actually like the band if you're asking a deep dive. Yeah. But if, if there's something, maybe we're overlooking something about this band, you know, let us know. I will, you know what I'm going to do when I drive home? I'm going to pump up my Apple Music and see what all the fuss is okay. about. Right. If I like it, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. If I don't, I'll put on something else. And also, what, what made uh, Kelly, speaking to you specifically, what was it that made you think that Eric would like them? Exactly. I'm, I'm curious to know. <laughs> um, so some of these questions, she was, she was responding to things that happened in the episodes. And unfortunately, our memories, at least my memory, is not good enough to... to to know what she was responding to specifically, but she asked, so when is Patrick starting his new career in country music? This is from episode 71, which I have no idea what that was about. My, uh, my, my country music uh, career has already left. It was started a long time ago, and it, I, I sang it's Rhinestone seated. Cowboy when I was uh, a teenager, and uh, that was the last time. Weren't you talking <laughs> about writing with that guy, though? That 5 o'clock somewhere yes. guy? Yes, that's happening on Labor Day. Okay. Actually, if if Beaumont's cleared up by then, that'd be fine. Yeah. That's a whole other week. Uh-huh. That's going to be cool. That's the day after Sherwood, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, did Chad ever get his turntable working? Uh, no, I didn't. But I did borrow a working one from my mom. I still have this old turntable that was, I don't know, it's from like the early 70s or something that was sitting idle for decades. And it's mm. just, it's intact, but it needs to be cleaned and probably completely taken apart and reassembled, which I'm scared to do because there's so many moving parts in there. You look at the bottom of it or look inside of it. It's like, it's like an old grandfather clock. This is oh, all this ridiculous, Speaking ridiculous. And complicated. This doesn't apply to anybody listening to this right now, but tomorrow is actually today, which is not tomorrow, which is today, but not Tuesday, but it's actually <laughs> Saturday is record store day. Oh yes, it is. It is. But that doesn't apply to anybody because by the time they hear it, it'll, it, it it'll be passed. passed. Yeah. Yeah. But for us currently, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, Patrick sings, you make me feel like a natural woman while in the shower, doesn't he? he says. <laughs> what are these questions? <laughs> I think that might have been a reference to his hair. I don't know sure what that was about. I like to sing, you make me feel unnatural, woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you make me feel unnatural, woman. <laughs> like you're telling a girl, like you, yeah. <laughs> something about you that makes you feel weird <laughs> uh, I think I know her sister yeah uh, did Chad complete his weight loss journey no I have not in fact I've gained weight since the pandemic started yes I am struggling to to turn that around but it has been a challenge um, yeah so you haven't you haven't been doing the video or nothing oh no I, I, I yeah I, I, I'd fallen off of that even before the pandemic started but uh, after it's Shortly after it started, I thought, well, maybe I could get back into it again. I just didn't, at the time, it just felt weird to go, to go make a video. Yeah, I lost another pound, you know, while all this crap is going on with people dying and shit. It was like, it didn't, it was hard for me to get excited about it then. Now I'm thinking people kind of need new content and they need something to, you know, people who are struggling like me to, 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 to get back on those plans. You know, sure. if maybe I should just talk about the trouble I'm having <laughs> sticking with the program. <sighs> Yeah, short answer to that question. No, I have not. <laughs> well, I, I would just you know for anybody that's doing the weight loss thing or the you were you were just essentially just doing calorie counting and food journaling, yeah. right? That kind of stuff. I'm actually on a really good streak right now. I I've, I haven't missed a day running in. I I, I forget, it, but the, we're in the 40s now. I've never never in my entire running career ever had a string of this many days. Mm. And I haven't, I'm not losing any weight, but. Why is that, Patrick? I'm glad you asked. Because uh, I'm not into, I'm not into weight. I, I don't weigh myself. So, I mean, I, I very, I very, well, all my genes, all, everything I have is, as, as, has, are too big for me now. I mean, so, so I've obviously lost a lot, but, but I'm, I've hit that, that place Plata. where it's not, but I've, I've never been more comfortable. So. You know, it, it's, it's, it, you know, the, the, the jeans and all the stuff now, they look like those nineties mom jeans are all baggy and, 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 uh, and, uh, that's what, but I, I wasn't doing, I, I don't run for weight loss. I don't run, I, I run for, for like we were talking about getting ready for show, something like that. Just, it just, you just feel better. 
And we have had, August hasn't been as bad as July. July was ungodly hot, just ridiculously humid. And the, the temperature was always, you know, high, high 90s. It felt, or, you know, it felt like the feel like temperature is, is that just a Houston thing? The, f- it, the feel like temperature? No. So it says it, that's okay. Because yeah. that's, that's it's absolutely bullshit. If it feels like that's, that's what the fucking temperature is. <laughs> End of story. Um, so, the, so I'm not doing it for weight loss. I'm doing it for just, just you know, so I don't kill somebody. And uh, uh, the, so I, my, my, my only suggestion would be that the, the best, you know, eat, without having to count calories is just you don't eat before noon and you don't eat after 7 o'clock. So that's your window. Do whatever the hell you want. And because uh, I, I, I had a streak before all that where I was not doing sugar and I was trying to, but that's all out the window. But it's running and you just eat in, in that yeah, small, window. Yeah. You know, in, in, in that window. And that's the end of it. Yeah. Intermittent, intermittent fasting is what yeah. they call it. Actually, I, on the show. Yeah. 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 Which I, I actually, I, when he mentioned it, I was like, oh, yeah. Because I'd kind of dabbled in that last year. I'd kind of find myself doing it just by default, not really trying to because I was trying to, you know, keep my calories within a certain budget. So I would hit a certain amount. I'd be like, crap, I'd just stop eating and then I wouldn't eat for the rest of the day until midnight. Oh. <laughs> the midnight would come and but things would take over and I'd eat again. But I, so I, when he mentioned it, I was like, oh, I'm going to try that because I'd kind of fallen off, I'd fallen off the logging, food logging horse. Mm-hmm. Whatever call it. So I tried that. And I do, I do like that because it, it kind of works, works with my body's natural schedule anyway because for most of the day usually i'm not really that hungry for the first eight hours of the day usually i don't really want to eat anyway so it's it's nice to work with that but i, I did that for a while but it didn't really help me lose weight <laughs> just doing that alone didn't really do i think much. sleep is going to help you sleep is important now you're Turn talking that a lot of things yeah now you're talking. and i don't i don't use any sleep aids i mean i can i can just just go go to sleep and there's some nights where you sleep better than others obviously but did the exercise during the day, and I, I of course I push my push it on my kids too, and make them go r- run and walk mm-hmm. and do whatever. But it it the the sleep is that's the most important. Yeah, I think it's more important than any of the For, yeah. of the foods and the you know. For many many reasons, maybe so, more than an hour and a half a night. Chad. Maybe more than an hour and a half. Say. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm actually really surprisingly. Uh, um, energetic right now i'm usually not this awake <laughs> effervescent yeah <laughs> 40 minutes i'm not the, usually I'm, uh, not this talkative yeah when it when i haven't slept this much and uh, there's been there's been shows we've done you know in the middle of the afternoon where i've been going uh, <laughs> like half asleep we have photographs to prove it mm-hmm. do you, uh, yes we do um okay how are we doing on time we, we're probably ready to wrap this up i was gonna move on to the the last couple of things okay. here she asked, have we done a, a, a Slappercast live stream yet? No. We've that's, talked about it. Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. I think that's, that's, a, that has to happen. I think that's a natural direction for the show at this point. It, it, was, it was kind of, we had to get used to being on camera for one thing, and then we had, had to kind of get used to the, the whole idea of not editing the show <laughs> and not being able to, to take things out that we, you know, I don't know, and be, being mindful of things that we say. I guess it, it probably is going to affect my language. No, everybody, what, everything that we say. There's certain things that we don't want to say live on the show, but, but you know, we were saying, that's why I was, are we rolling? Are we rolling? Okay. And then we start saying other stuff. <laughs> we won't be able to do that if we're, if we're going out live, obviously. It would be a different question. Are we live? It depends live? on what we say. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, we, we probably will be doing that maybe uh, sometime in the next couple of months or a couple Before, of weeks, maybe even. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably we'll be on YouTube, here on YouTube where the, uh, the, the video shows are posted. Rather than on Facebook, but yeah, we will do that. And this this other question, the last question: Do did y'all ever record your version of Danny Boy? Danny Boy, what's that? How's that go? Danny. Yeah, Is that Danny with an Y or Danny with an I? Oh, mm. yeah. I guess it's a boy, so it's going to be with a Y. <laughs> it completely changes the slant of the song, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the sex change, Danny Boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could we could be we could be coy about this answer, or we could just answer the Danny question. Coy. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> What's the question again? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Have we recorded it? We've we've Have recorded we? many 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 songs, and 
to, to, to be quite frank, uh, Danny Boy was one of them. We were toying with it. And uh, is it going to see the light of day? We don't know. We don't know. It's uh, <laughs> that's uh, that, that might be its whole uh, uh, singular show. A whole episode just, about Danny uh, Boy. Yeah, just uh, mm. on that one. Um, nobody ever should record Danny Boy. Tom Jones has recorded it. Elvis has recorded it. Uh, you know, just it, it should never have been recorded. It should never have been written. <laughs> and uh, so, so yes, we're going to record it <laughs> and release it. Well, we, we, we mentioned this on the show too. I, I think, I think you brought it up that we, we were, we were doing one of the shows out at the Pecan Grove. Yeah. And, uh, was somebody, was it, was it? Paul Finnegan. Was it him himself who, who requested it? He, he and his cousin. Yeah. His cousin was over from Ireland, Paul Finnegan from Ireland. He owns Finnegan's Motors. You've seen them. You've seen them all over yeah. Houston. And they're, they're, I think they're most prominent in this, uh, down Richmond, Rosenberg. And, uh, but he's got a bunch of car dealerships. Ooh. And Paul's ex-dub. And he's, yeah, his cousin was over. And we were playing a show at the country club down there in the Pecan Grove. And they had requested Danny Boy. And we played it. and. Uh, Paul was responsible for us playing down there more times than we should have. Uh, just uh, always, yeah, just Finnegan writes the check and the club brings us in. And blah. But we played it that one time and his, his cousin that was visiting from Ireland, um, she had said that she hates the song and she had really enjoyed our yeah. Yeah. version of it. And for an Irish person to say that to you, it's, it's yeah. you know. What's it compared to like in America? I mean, what, what would the song be like, you know, that like... People either love it or they hate it. I mean, brown eyed girl or brown eyed girl or, or probably probably worse question. than that. Probably yeah, Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's a good. That's that, that's some good homework. I looked at. I have to dig in. I was looking at my uh, pictures from when I went to Ireland last year with my dad, and actually the bus driver on a tour around Killarney, the Ring of Killarney, the Ring of uh, Kerry, he uh, he uh, sang Danny Boy for us. <laughs> Two verses. That's one and a half too many. It was, uh, it was fine. Yeah. Because we, most of the time when we played Danny Boy, it was kind of, we were kind of doing it jokingly. Or we'd, you'd, you'd, you know, you'd play one verse or half a verse or something, and we'd, we'd go into uh, Donegal, Donegal Express. Donegal Express. Mm. Um, and only very occasionally would we actually play the whole song. So that, when we did it that night, it was just uh, not just the, the feedback we got, but I remember you saying, it was like, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> you know? I never said it that. Was, Shut there up. was there was some, yeah because you you asked me to send get the recording <laughs> dig up that recording and send it to me because you wanted it to, to well just, I just I, I couldn't remember how we did it yeah. I couldn't remember I, I I don't remember how we did it and I do not care to remember how we did it but we well it was it was it, yeah. people didn't run out of the room and it's also the guy that's that hired you, you yeah know, you know we're talking about club etiquette and going in there and you know getting you getting your gear out before you know the, the the cock crows or before the you know, sunrise or whatever that, you know, you, you just, you, you know. Well, the thing was, it was a particularly good vocal performance. I thought you've always sung that song. It's like a, a lot of these traditional songs where the melodies, this has been a blackguard's hallmark for, for since the beginning. I think that, you know, the, 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 tr the traditional way of playing a lot of these, like these old songs is to just don't stray from the, tr the melody. You just, every, and every verse is the same, you know, you know, there's very little embellishment or, you know, that's the way most trad players are used to playing, I think. Um, but you always take the melody and build on it. You know, you know you've never sung it, sung a song just straight. And that oh, was, it's, it's, so. no, it's been done and it shouldn't have been done. Yeah. So you have to, you have to add to it. Yeah. So uh, I have a question for anybody that's listening or even you guys. So if you, uh, if you, if you wanted to have somebody on the show, who would it be? If you have uh if you have any ideas, any, you know, let us know. Cause you know, I know we're talking to, to, uh, to, uh, Joan, Joan Narnia up in, uh, Nebraska. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she's going to be on the show very, very soon. So, uh, yeah, if you have anybody, let us know. Cause, cause like I guess we're, we're going to talk to, uh, we're going to have Slade Ham, the, uh, Houston comedian on here very soon. Uh, we're going to talk to Pete Gordon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just that'd be think, fun. That'd be really fun. Yeah. To, so he's the, he's the uh, Pete responsible for the Continental Club here in Houston and uh, mostly responsible for the Continental in, in Austin as well. But uh, 
just and not not just a not just a dear friend but incredible personality and uh much like slade too will be a pistol to pistol yeah. to, to have on the on the show and uh, so many stories and yeah you get out of them yeah so all right is that a wrap it's a wrap all right thank you kelly for the questions yeah, thanks again thanks for listening and going through the 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 many 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 hours of this stuff and um yeah we're, we're looking forward to to seeing you all at sherwood well seeing you uh sherwood and we'll we'll uh yeah you're gonna hear some hear some new stuff coming up here pretty soon and yeah we're 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 glad you're here stay safe yep bye <laughs>